Hello again, it's Tubal Cain, and in this several part series, I'm going to discuss how to buy a South Bend lathe. So I'm going to give you some historical stuff and advertising stuff and uh, show you my uh, two different South Bend lathes, talk about them, show you some old advertising information and, uh, and quite a bit more, and then end up with talking about the condition of the lathe, how to determine the wear, and even uh, give you some tips on the values, but those will vary greatly depending on your location. Now in Australia, they were licensed to make a clone of this, and I'm talking about many years ago, and those were sold under the name of Hercus, H-E-R-C-U-S. So you might see some videos on YouTube about Hercus lathes, and you'll notice the similarity. So there was a licensed agreement on that, and I suppose royalties paid. I was catching up on my reading the other day, and I got clear into September of 1944 here in my popular science, and you know, we had just uh, got over D-Day at that time, but uh, in the back of virtually every uh, one of these old uh, smellers here, uh, there was South Bend ads, and here you couldn't even buy a South Bend lathe during the war, war, but they're telling you how great they are and how much they helped us uh, win the war, or how, why we were winning the war, and all of that. And uh, then after the war here in 1949, uh, again, right at the end here, after they're telling you how great camel cigarettes are and how they won't uh, uh, cause throat irritation, of course, that's a, a sideline there because they're not telling you your lung is rotting out from the carcinogens. But uh, there's an ad for the 9-inch lays, 340. Now, some of you can go to the inflation fighter and tell, them, tell us what that's worth, but that was so un unaffordable at that time, even though it sounds cheap now. And there in May of 47, cover's falling off. There's another guy without safety glasses. He's blind now, you know, uh, using a lathe. Famous for versatility. And in uh, October of 52, still we're making Rio trucks. There they're advertising their 14 and a half inch lathe. And you could get brochures and uh, catalogs. But now let me show you the really good one. Well, here's another one, uh, 1947, and uh, this has fallen apart. The basic shop tool is the South Bend lathe. South Bend, Indiana. Nothing left of that factory. I think maybe a couple of old buildings, but that's about all. But uh, here's what I really wanted to show you. In 1948, the advertisement at the end of the magazine was actually a catalog. About 10 pages telling you all about South Bend precision machine tools, their drill presses and shapers and that, and, and all the specifications on the different models, including one like mine. That was a, almost a $1,000. Well, that would be like, what, six or eight or 9,000 now, totally unaffordable. There are the nine inchers, turret lathes, all of the accessories and collets. This is interesting reading. This is one that I'm going to save in my archives, even after I throw out the rest of this stuff. And all the, uh, the other accessories and the prices. There's a complete price sheet on South Bend lathes. There's a two-page ad in the 1952 magazine. The South Bend Lathe Company was started in uh, 1906 by the O'Brien brothers. And there are some other ads that I pulled out. And I find all that stuff quite interesting. I hope you do. And then in some of the older magazines, they also ran smaller ads just for some of their accessories. Lathe dogs. If you do not have a copy of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book, you simply must get it. It is the Bible as far as uh, running lathes are concerned. All the basics are in there. They made it in many, many editions over a 60 or 70 year period. It indeed was written or authored by uh, the founders of the South Bend Company. They were identical twins. Uh, John and Miles O'Brien. 
And uh, they had worked, or at least one of them had worked for Edison. They were, you know, learned men. So get yourself a copy of that. Now this is also available on Google Books, I believe, but it's an older edition uh, that you may not like. It's not nearly as good as this. <clears throat> Here's a, a little bit newer one. That's uh, edition, uh, what is it, 19... 58, that's the one I used when I was in high school. So these are really good books. Here's what you can get now from Grizzly. It's going to look like that with the cover. That's after Amstead Industries owned it, but now it probably says something else there. And also there were reprints. Well, here's one here. This is the, uh, the Lindsay reprint of it. But Lindsay went out of business and that was the 42 edition, which maybe was out of copyright, and he he was able to copy it. It's uh, the printing job isn't quite as good, but it still would serve you quite well. And even if you don't have the South Bend book, the uh, the Atlas book, as I've mentioned many times, is a wonderful book on lathe operation. So get yourself one of those or the other. Don't worry, I'm going to talk plenty about these lathes. This 10 inch and this 9 inch, but before I get to those, let me talk about some other South Bend lathes that I have loved and lost. I forgot to mention that South Bend Lathe Company had many other publications on how to care and repair lathes and, and so on. Uh, they were shorter publications and booklets, but uh, some of those are still available on Feebay. But the very first South Bend that I had was a 9-inch Model C, and I inherited it from my dad. And notice that the Model C does not have a quick-change gearbox. It does not have a, a clutch here. You had to use the half-nut lever. And uh, I hated to give it up, but I did sell that lathe, and that's when I bought that 12-inch uh, Atlas lathe that I have in the basement. And I, I do... Uh, lament the fact that I that I sold that because it was my dad's but this one was mounted my dad's was mounted on beautiful cast iron legs from the factory uh, rather than being table mounted so that was a nice lathe and uh, that's that's about 20 years ago that, since I've had that now let's take a look at the the next one this is a picture of the second South Bend lathe that I own, and that's a 13-inch model. And there I am, or I should say there's my son-in-law. This is about 15 years ago, and we're at the loading dock in Princeton, Illinois, where I bought this from the Jostin Company when they got rid of their machine shop. And you talk about a heavy lathe, and was that a job to get in my basement? And it sat for about five years right behind me where I'm standing now, where the clausing lathe now stands. I got rid of it only because I was able to buy that clausing lathe, and uh, uh, this one was much longer, took up a lot of floor space, but it was really a great lathe with a rather light uh, use on it because it was in a factory where they made class rings. So they didn't do heavy work with it and came with a bunch of accessories. And uh, I do lament selling that, but and I wish I had taken videos of how I got that down the basement. It was disassembled, and the weight of the bed alone, I think, was about 800 pounds. It took six, six men uh, to get that down the stairs, kind of like I moved that uh, smaller Logan lathe shown in one of my other videos. But uh, I am a little sorry that I got rid of that, but there just was not room for that and the closing lathe. So, and that's a 13 inch. It had a taper attachment and collet attachment and and uh, about everything else you could want. And, and I've got some other pictures of this, but not in the basement. All right, let's take a look at my next lathe. This is the third South Bend lathe that I owned. And it's a nine inch model A. I believe it's an A. Notice that it has uh, the clutch here and the feed change lever and uh, a quick change gearbox. And I will not own a lathe that does not have a quick change gearbox, I'm sorry. But I only had this lathe for two or three years and I, I did uh, use it uh, extensively in my video course called uh, How to Run a South Bend Lathe, so you'll see it there. Yeah, if you're interested in that. And, and it was a nice lathe, but there was tremendous wear underneath 
the tailstock here where I'm pointing now. And uh, I let that go when that 10 inch lathe became available. So I'm like a man that uh, trades up with automobiles. Picture of the head socket. This was a very good looking lathe. The motor and the drive underneath. And it ran smooth and quiet. I do wish I still had it and I lament selling it. Now I want to take a short field trip with you as I go to my friend Lee's house 25 miles from here and we take a look at his 9 inch, I believe it's a 9 inch tool room lathe and you will see that in my how to run a lathe series as well uh, as I did the video on uh, taper turning with the taper attachment. So I'll see you in a half hour at my friend's house. I'm on a short field trip at a friend's house and you may remember seeing this little South Bend 9 inch lathe in one of my other videos. It has the cast iron base got about a seven or eight inch chuck on there and this uh, machine has a collet attachment plus all kinds of other uh, attachments and uh, accessories here but the nice thing about a lathe like this that is equipped with uh, collets is that it has the extra large spindle hole so you can uh, work with stock that's about one and three eighths diameter and a note that on the older lathes with a quick change gearbox, instead of having two tumblers, there's one tumbler and then a lever here that has, uh, I think it's three different positions, and then the sliding gear here as well. Note that this is a 9 inch lathe, here's the tag on it. And this lathe was probably built in the late 30s or early 40s. This lathe originally came from a high school and was owned by my brother for a while, but it's got a four jaw chuck. Here's the uh, hand wheel of the draw bar and a dog plate. Uh, complete set of collets along with a three jaw chuck and there's the uh, spindle adapter for the collet attachment live center and best of all it has the uh, taper attachment which I sh have shown in another video I believe it's in my uh, my video South Bend course so this is a nice tool room lathe so watch for one like this in good condition and it's got the threading dial. Motor is below. And that's the belt, belt tension. Which should be kept in the relaxed position if possible. So that's uh, the little South Bend uh, 9 inch. I know I've spent a lot of time talking about the background of the South Bend Company and all their publications and so on, but uh, that concludes this video. Stay tuned for the next part as I talk specifically about this 10 inch South Bend lathe as well as the 9 inch, uh, what to look for and how to evaluate it, how to buy a South Bend lathe. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.